obviously you were, you know, very dominant and obviously had a lot of success as the super suits started to rise up. And some people will argue that the super suits benefited some people more than other people. What are your general views on that? And if you do have an opinion on that, which body types maybe were more successful with the super suits? I think, I, and again, uh, you know, anybody that's, you know, everyone that wasn't around or racing in, in that era, they, they, they've got nothing to compare it to. But if, if you are, are, if you have a bigger frame or if you're, if you're, if you've got more uh, muscle on you, <laughs> Or if, if you're just kind of a, a chubbier kind of swimmer, um, let's just call it what it is. If you're one of those people that, you know, just uh, just was a little bigger, uh, those those swimmers had the most to gain just because it, it compressed their bodies uh, more. I think I think um, with the introduction of Speedos um, suit in 2008 or it was a 2007, uh, it was for the first time a technology of compressing, you know, compression. And, and that was a really, really big deal. Um, uh, you know, the next generation of that was the introduction of neoprene in, 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 uh, in, in suits. And, you know, and, and then, you know, at that time, my sponsor was Arena. Uh, you know, they, they were one of the last people to kind of enter that, that neoprene game. And, and, and literally, they, you know, they, they had just produced a suit, you know, almost the, the eve of the World Championships in 2009. But, you know, there was there was Jake it and, uh, you know, from what I heard, Brian, you know, you've kind of introduced Jake it to Auburn and uh, and and man, you know, it was it was just a hard time because at that time for all those people that were following soon back then, they they would they, the, the first question was who won. And then they would they would drop a name. And then the second question was not what time they went, but what suit did they wear? Right. And, and I mean, it was such a wild time that those people that were locked into certain companies, you know, that they were locked into, you know, because of their sponsorship agreements, they, 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 they were helpless in feeling like, well, you know, everybody's talking about Jacob, you know, uh, what would happen if I were to use that suit instead of my, 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 you know, tier suit or, or my arena suit or my speedo suit, nobody knew. But there was a lot of athletes that were willing to break contract and pay a fine to wear the suit that everyone else was talking about. And, 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 and that was kind of sad, you know. I, I look at today and, uh, you know, nowadays with boys, you know, we're, we're only allowed to wear jammers. And, and, you know, if you ask me, it doesn't matter what suit you wear today. You know, for girls, since a larger, larger part of their body is, is covered, you know, it's still, it's still a little valid. But, um, you know, when I think about things back then, it was, it was, it was important. You know, you could, with the Jacob, they were saying that you could literally easily take 0.5 off of every 50, right? So, so imagine that, you know, like uh, across a hundred meters, if you want to say that, you know, you were, you were a whole second faster because you wore a suit, you know, that, that was just the reality we were living in. I mean, I remember, um, I remember, I remember Laveau from France. He had a tier agreement, and he wore two, and I even heard one time three body suits at the same time when he broke that world record in the hundred short force meter freestyle. I think it was like a, no. I think it was, I think it was a forty four ninety five or something like that. Yeah, forty four. I think it was forty four ninety one. Sad that I might know that. Swim nerds, no. but no. yeah, the uh, I didn't know that he was wearing two suits in the in that era. But yeah, that was. That was crazy. You mentioned half a second um, per 50, and you think about Biederman's world record at 142 flat. Nobody's going sub 144 today. And and guys, for those of you that want to even go back even like seven years earlier, you know, with uh, with Thorpe and that Adidas suit. If you ever had that Adidas suit, the one with the like, it was yeah. terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> you know, you 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 wrecked it. like these suits and this material it was created to cut, you know, to slip through water. And imagine grabbing the water and your forearms just slipping, right? Mm. So, so what I heard, and and again, this isn't this isn't this isn't what happened, but you know, I I was what I heard, and I'm gonna say it. People that were using those Adidas suits, they were spraying on Teflon, right? And and for that reason, a lot of these athletes they didn't take their suits off after the race; they had to cut them off with scissors. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> story. 
Well, Brett, Brett Hawk coached me at Auburn for a while, and he he used to tell me that uh, they used to um, cut that suit off, but the, the suit would float on its own, the Thorpe's Adidas suit. So, you know, I don't know if uh, I never saw it myself, but that was crazy. Yeah, you think about um, you think about the, the athletes today uh, and who would benefit the most from suits. That's an interesting thought. I mean, I think it's some of the guy like Dennis Rapsis, who's kicking it in the 200 free, but he's he's kind of a bigger guy. I could see him Mind really you. tearing it up with uh, with a super suit. We would have a 139 200 freestyle if he, that guy were to put one of those uh, one of those Jake wow. on today. Wow. Don't you think?